Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk and today I'm going to be showing you how to make simple solder joints. This is part of my basic electronic series which you can find at xrobots.co.uk slash electronics. So I've got a couple of things here, a resistor and an LED and a piece of copper board. And I'm also um, going to show you soldering wires to the resistor and the LED and so on. And I'm just going to basically make lots of solder joints and show you the best way to do it. So I've already heated my soldering iron up. Of course, soldering irons get hot. This one um, is actually adjustable from uh, 200 to 450 degrees C. It's got a little adjuster on it. So obviously that's um, more than hot enough to burn you and hot, obviously it has to be hot enough to melt metal. There's a sponge in the bottom of the stand which you make wet with water. And that's for cleaning the end. So basically you should have a nice bright shiny tip on the soldering iron. The hole in there is for doing this. Lots of people wonder why that's there. I'm using multi-core solder which has flux within the actual solder and that helps keep the joint and the end clean so you should basically tin the bit before you start just by getting some solder on the end giving it a good clean. So I'm going to solder this resistor and LED together so I've got my helping hands here which are quite useful for holding things so I'm just going to clip the two parts in there so that they're touching. Now the thing you should do when you're soldering is heat up both pieces of the metal that you're going to join together and then apply the solder to the joint so it flows all the way around. Uh, let it flow around with the solder away from the joint and then take the iron off. So the iron on, solder on, solder off and iron off. And that should make a nice joint there once it's cooled. That should be a nice strong mechanical joint. So I uh, probably should have trimmed the legs down for those so I'm just going to redo that and then we'll attach some wires to it. So I've just put that back together with the legs trimmed down and I just cut those down with a pair of normal cutters so that it's uh, much shorter altogether. And now I'm going to attach a piece of wire to it. So the first way of doing that of course is to just twist the wire on there and then put solder over the top of it. So we'll just wrap that round so it holds itself on. Just clip that in there. And then again we're going to heat up the joint add the solder in, keep it flowing for a bit and then take the iron off, so again iron on, solder on, solder off, iron off and that should give us a fairly good connection could put some sleeving over that if we wanted to the other one I'm going to do slightly differently so I'm just going to take a piece of wire, I've just, uh, it's multi-strand wire so I've just twisted the end of that together I'm just going to tin the wire, so I'm going to heat it, get some solder on it. And then I'm just going to use that to stick it onto the LED. So all I'm going to do is hold that with the other hand, reheat it. And there we go. So the legs of these components, which are already sort of silver in colour, those are already tinned, which means they're already coated with solder. So it makes it quite easy to attach other things to them. Um, if there's some excess solder on the wire, you can just melt it and it will just stick together. So we should find now we've got two wires attached and the LED. And if you want to find out about how to uh, calculate the resistor value, there's an article on my website that I've already written. I'm probably going to make another video about it. it tells you all about how to calculate that value of resistor for for different voltages that you're providing. Next thing I'm going to do is a joint onto this piece of copper board so we're just going to take another LED, stick that through the holes, just hold that in there temporarily and basically we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to place the iron so it touches the copper track and the leg of the component, feed in the solder, 
let it flow all the way around, take off the iron, we should have a perfect joint. Let me just do the other one. So that's a general rule for good solder joints, is to make sure that basically both pieces of the joint are hot. Feed in the solder, leave it heating for a while, remove the heat, and you should have a perfect solder joint, and you'll know it's good because it's nice and shiny. If it's dull, then it's got holes in basically, which um, or it's not stuck properly to one surface. Solder is like glue, basically sticking two things together, rather than like welding, which actually melts them together. So it's quite important that both uh, surfaces are hot when you apply the solder, and then you'll get good clean joints.